welcome. Thank you for taking uh, a half hour out of your health to learn about how to take care, how to take better care of yourself. Um, what I, one thing I realized about these notes is there's a bunch of extra slides at the end of it <laughs> that I forgot about. I haven't even looked at those slides, so we're not going to go get through all the slides tonight. Okay. So, uh, you know, the, the title tonight is uh, How to Shrink Your Brain or How Not to Shrink It or Is It Shrinking, you know. And so we want big, healthy brains. And the reason that I tell you this, would you say that in our culture, that our culture tends to want to keep people's brains strong or, or, or weak? weak? Very weak. Weak. So why would you say that? So control. they can control us. Mm -hmm. But how are they do? How is the how are how is our culture? What is it about our culture that's trying to keep our brains weak? What is it that 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 is happening? Our diets. Yeah. Okay. So our diets. Okay. Uh, I won't question any more on that. Mm -hmm. That that would definitely be an issue. Uh, food companies. If you, you think the food companies care whether you have a, a healthy brain or not? No. No, I mean they want it to be kind of weak, so you you know they can get more of your money. You know, uh, what else? What else in our culture? Anything else that you guys can think of? Well, okay. The news media, if they repeat it, they think they'll believe it. Yeah. So so um, propaganda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. We're not going to cover that tonight, <laughs> but that's an issue. <laughs> okay, so the reason I do these talks is because I want you to make more informed healthcare decisions about the things that you decide on in your life to do. And so um, tonight, uh, let's get this on here. Oh, it always helps when I put this thing in. <laughs> So, what is this? What's this a picture of? Aquarium. Okay, is it is water dirty or clean? Dirty. 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 Okay, so how is this dirty aquarium a lot like our healthcare system? Anybody? It'll kill them. Okay, dirty aquarium. Anybody ever have an aquarium when you're growing up? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever not clean it and have guppies floating on the top? <laughs> yeah, we do. Okay. Okay. So how is this like our healthcare system? Anybody? It's full of sickness. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So our healthcare system, when the tank is dirty, they don't clean the tank, they medicate the fish. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's what they do. They don't clean they don't believe in cleaning the fish tank. The, the sicker the fish get, the more medication they give them. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we're not gonna we're not going to medicate the fish tonight. We're going to clean the tank and show you how to, to keep our brains healthy. So that's a good analogy you can use for people that take too many pharmaceuticals. You you know, without telling them, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. That's stupid. You know, just say, look, in our culture, we don't clean the fish tank. We medicate the fish. Fish get sick because of dirty fish tank. We give them more drugs. Okay. So. First things first, why are we doing this? Um, uh, first of all, I don't want you to waste your time, your money, or your energy, uh, but I want to show you the value of good research, and I want you to put this good information into action mm -hmm. and enjoy the fruit of good choices for your life. So, loss of brain volume may cause a myriad <coughs> of dysfunctions which can affect your life, like memory loss. I hear this all the time. People say, well, I just can't remember like I used to. Cognitive dysfunction, mood and personality disorders, accelerated Alzheimer's, increased health care costs. Anybody ever hear the statistic on Alzheimer's in 2050? Okay, it's going to be so prevalent that it's going to completely use up our entire gross domestic product. That's how fast this is happening with Alzheimer's. Increased burden on your family. Well, we all know how that can go. And reduce quantity and quality of your life. So Alzheimer's has now become the third leading cause of death, moving ahead of stroke. That was in, um, uh, gosh, something I found online, a journal I found online. 
um, but I've seen it in several other places. So depending on who you read, okay? Um, so the choice is yours. Now let's look at the, the, let's contrast cancer, heart disease, and stroke with dementia and Alzheimer's, because they're both, all these diseases are degenerative diseases. And they're all, and we're gonna, sh we're gonna show you here in a minute their lifestyle. So cancer, heart disease, and stroke can have a sudden and painful onset of symptoms. Dementia, symptoms usually come on very gradually over time, okay? Uh, cancer, heart disease, and stroke, moderate to ve severe dysfunction, uh, disruptions in function, uh, but you can get some rehab for some of this. Um, in dementia and Alzheimer's, it causes major functional dis disruptions, but other people have to help you is a, is a key. You can't rehab this. In cancer, heart disease, and stroke, mind is usually intact, so you're aware of what's going on, you're aware of what your family is feeling and thinking, but not in Alzheimer's, not when your, your brain starts shrinking, your mind erodes away, so you don't have to worry about it. Everybody else has to worry. So modern research is demonstrating how lifestyles are causing our brain to shrink, okay? So this is like the aquarium it's getting dirty and it's causing problems in the brain. As with most health conditions, genes are 25% of the issue, but how we treat our genes, meaning how we eat, how we exercise, how we think, 75%. So genes can be altered by our lifestyle. And if you have a genetic predisposition towards Alzheimer's, you can keep those genes turned off by what I'm gonna show you tonight. So, we're to explore the top 12 actions you can take to shrink your brain. So, number one, if you want to shrink your brain, don't drink water, okay? Just reduce your water intake, okay? Dehydration leads to brain shrinkage, headaches, dizziness, brain fog, poor concentration. I had a friend tell me that when she got, she got up in the morning, the first thing she started doing was drinking a glass of water, completely invigorated her. You know, she's dehydrated, okay? Um, so, so we need to drink water to keep our brain healthy. Is that simple? Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. You know, low cost, okay? Doesn't involve going to the emergency room. Uh, start reducing your sleep. So if you want to shrink your brain, don't sleep, okay? Stay up late, get up early, burn the candle on both ends. Um, when you sleep, your body literally cleanses your brain, okay? That happens when you sleep. So if you don't sleep, your body can't get rid of the waste in your brain. It cannot clean the aquarium, all right? Wakefulness, um, too much wakefulness is associated with mitochondrial, mitochondrial stress, which are the, the parts of the cell that produce energy. Without sufficient sleep, neuron degeneration sets in. You know, when I was in college, I thought, you know, not sleeping and staying up late all half the night to study was, you know, that was a badge of honor. Well, now I'm realizing that wasn't good for my brain, you know. Uh, catching up on sleep debt on the weekends does not prevent that damage. Is it true if you uh, don't sleep after midnight, you don't get that time back once you do sleep? You don't get as much, right, right, okay. yeah. Yeah, you know, and of course, you know, when you're 18 to 24, right. I mean, midnight's early. Right. You know, you don't right. want to go to bed that early. Right. <laughs> now, now, I go to, now, 10.30's late. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, poor sleeping habits can cause brain damage, brain shrinkage, and accelerated Alzheimer's disease. Now, next time, next time I do this talk, which is in two weeks, why can't I sleep? So we're going to talk about, you know, why people can't sleep. So not sleeping has also been linked to obesity, definitely hormone alteration. Okay. Can anybody tell me how um, not sleeping would lead to hormone alteration? Anybody? Yeah, cortisol. Good job, man. You deserve a prize for that. Thank you. That's exactly right. Cortisol. So we put, we stress our body by not sleeping. It's very stressful. Cortisol levels go up. Cortisol, high cortisol, um, 
uh, robs your body of progesterone. It's called pregnenolone steel syndrome, and that really throws your hormones off and uh, can cause excess estrogen, which can lead to obesity. Okay, this is in the journal Neurology, which is a very, very prestigious journal. This is 2014. So number three, if you want to shrink your, your brain, reduce or eliminate exercise. In other words, don't exercise, sit in front of the TV as much as you can, and, and just veg out, okay? Um, exercise, it says, while well, lack of sleep can lead to brain shrinkage, those who exercise the most tend to have the least amount of brain shrinkage over time. Not only that, but exercise actually causes your brain to grow in size, okay? So, um, so no more excuses about exercise, okay? All right, so big, you know, big exercise, big brain, okay? So if you wanna shrink your brain, just become and remain depressed. Um, depression reduces the size of, of certain parts of your brain um, uh, involving emotions and memory. So uh, it's called the hippocampus, and it leads to a loss of emotional and behavioral function. So it's kind of a, uh, a cycle. So you get depressed, your brain shrinks, you get more depressed. So do what you can to not be depressed. Well, exercise is one of those things that... I think exercise is one of the best cures for depression that there is. I wouldn't say it's the only one, but there's some good science behind that. Mm -hmm. A study at Duke University did back in 2007 showed that exercise for mild to moderate depression was better than pharmaceuticals. Uh, number five, you want to shrink your brain, reduce B vitamins in your diet. Make sure you don't get any B vitamins. So you don't want to, um, you want to get you want to drink excessively, and avoid green vegetables, and no grass-fed meat, okay? You want to avoid that, okay? According to the latest research, people with low levels of markers for B12 were more likely to see a score lower on their cognitive tests as well as a smaller brain total volume. Come on in, ladies. Okay. <clears throat> We give you, we have an extra chair here, and there's one right there. Oh. Okay, okay. There you go. Thanks. Hi. Hi. So, so if you have a vitamin B12 deficiency, that can shrink your brain, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you something interesting here in a minute about B vitamins. Um, this one right here, studies have shown that high doses of vitamin B6 B8, which is inositol, and B12 combination were effective for improving schizophrenia. Now, this is there's some good research on this. Has this been known for a long time? Okay, do they use this in mental institutions? Of course not so. that I know of, no. but they they have in the past. Niacin may actually be a key treatment for psychological disorders, including schizophrenia. That's in, out of a journal called Psychological Medicine, February 2017. So, um, you know, the, the B vitamin I like is Cataplex B Core, which is full of whole food nutrition, which has a lot of vitamin B, different vitamin Bs in it. So, uh, but this is very, very interesting. Uh, Inositol is also good for sugar cravings and helping your, your body handle sugar, okay? <laughs> So if it's water soluble, I mean, does it go through your body if you do, if you've had too much bees? The bees. Well, if they're in a whole food form, yeah, they your they won't go through your body. Okay. Your body will use them in a whole yeah, that's food what I, form. Okay. Now, if they're synthetic, yeah. yes, and most of the B vitamins you get at the store, they're synthetic. synthetic. Okay, most of them are synthetic. Vast majority. Okay. So if you want to shrink your brain, increase your alcohol intake. So just, you know, <laughs> drink regularly, okay? Glass of wine in the morning, glass of wine at noon, glass of wine in the evening, okay? So um, they show that there's a linear negative effect on alcohol consumption and brain volume. I mean, the more you consume in alcohol, the smaller your brain gets, okay? 
not very good. So that makes me wonder, you know, how much alcohol the people in Washington are drinking sometimes. Yes. You know? But I'm not going to comment politically as much as I'm going to say, okay? So um, they concluded that brain shrinkage was reported was a result of even low to moderate alcohol consumption. Okay, so you don't need to, to take much, okay? Now, if you want to shrink your brain, load up on prescription painkillers, especially narcotics. Yes. Morphine, painkillers, and especially morphine have been shown to shrink brain volume by 3% after only one month. That's a lot, okay? Mm. That is a lot. Okay, so all the this fentanyl and oxycodone and all of that, bad for your brain, okay? I'm not saying nobody should ever take painkillers. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you don't want to take them for very long if you can, if you can help it, okay? Okay, if you want to shrink your brain... Eat donuts. In, yeah, there you go. Eat lots of them, okay? Yeah, hang out at Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Patronize that place. <laughs> so, uh, long-term sugar intake can contribute to the shrinking of your hippocampus, and, which is a hallmark in Alzheimer's disease. Um, if you want to shrink your brain, increase your intake of trans fats which is you find in processed food, margarine. Mm -hmm. A diet high in trans fat shrinks the brain and increases the risk of dementia. Mm -hmm. So, where are trans fats found? Fast food, processed food, margarine, uh, short meat chips, flaky pastries, many fried foods. What else do trans fats do besides uh, uh, increase the risk of dementia? What do they do in the body? What action do they do? Anybody? Triglycerides. No. Triglycerides. I mean, I don't. Yeah, they do raise your triglycerides. They create inflammation. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yes. Okay. So you you don't want that. Okay. No. <laughs> All right. So here's a here's a few of the uh, things that you you'll find trans fats in down here. Okay. If you want to shrink your brain, decrease your intake of healthy, <coughs> unprocessed foods, okay? So, study participants who are di have diets high in B, C, D, and E, and omega-3 fats were found to have large, healthy brains rather than their junk food-eating counterparts. So, if you wanna shrink your brain, um, you, wanna, you wanna avoid healthy and unprocessed foods. So, uh, if you look at um, the diets of a lot of people in prison that are in prison, mm -hmm. you think they have high omega-3 levels or low? Mm -hmm. low. Very low, and that's been proven. There was a study that was done, it was, it was years ago, where they, they took a, some violent, a, a section of violent prisoners in a prison and gave them omega-3 fatty acid supplements and it really decreased the, the violence in the prison just by doing that. Because mm -hmm. it does, the kind of fat you eat affects your brain. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Your brain is, is made of fat. fat. Brain's mm -hmm. made of fat. Your brain's a big glob of fat. That's, That's what it right. is. Yeah, 70%. So, yeah. So you, when you eat fat, whatever fat you eat, that eventually gets into your brain. Okay, yeah. so you want to eat good fat, yeah. so your brain uh, can work better, all right? So, uh, if you want to shrink your brain, run as far as you can from the Mediterranean <laughs> diet, okay? So, studies have reported that higher adherence to the Mediterranean diet is associated with larger brain volumes, okay? So, Mediterranean diet is, is um, lean meats. Nuts, seeds, oils, okay, uh, lots of olive oil. Uh, it's a Mediterranean diet. Uh, if you want to shrink your brain, don't eat any brain food on a regular basis, okay? So here's a list of some of them. I've seen other lists. Curry, very anti-inflammatory. 
celery calms inflammation broccoli and cauliflower really good for detoxifying your body of, of bad hormones that really helps your liver detoxify walnuts high in omega-3 garbanzo beans which i i admit i don't eat much of those high in magnesium red meat vitamin b12 blueberries very powerful mm. antioxidant uh, and healthy fats, as we know, are good for us. We just talked about that. So if you want to shrink your brain, and if you are a meal, if you are a male, eat more non-fermented soy. Soy is very bad for men, okay? Um, it does all kinds of things that you don't want it to do. It, it mimics um, estrogen. It uh, uh, uptake, it causes a blocks your body's uptake of minerals. Uh, they're pro-inflammatory. They're very high in omega-6 fats. Most soybeans are genetically modified. So they have, you have the issue of, of uh, a roundup in herbicides in the soybeans. So you want to, you want to avoid like things like tofu. Now, when I was in chiropractic school, I started eating pretty healthy in chiropractic school. One of the things I ate quite a bit of was tofu. I didn't know any of this. I don't think anybody knew this back in the 70s when I was in chiropractic college. But I used to eat that stuff. And I don't eat it anymore, I can tell you that. I don't want to turn into a woman. No offense. No offense, Mark. Number 10, strive to be overweight and obese. Um, an, MRI, an MR imaging study uh, compared brain white matter volume in obese and lean middle-aged individuals. Those who were obese had smaller white matter volumes than lean. Okay? Wow. So, you know, try and, and, and bring yourself to normal weight as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's hard. Okay? So, do the other stuff then. Exercise, eat, eat a good diet, make sure you have good B vitamins, omega-3 fatty acids. Do what you can. Okay? Uh, if, if you want to shrink your brain, promote a type 2 diabetes lifestyle. Type 2 diabetes ages your brain about five years faster than normal. It is bad for your brain. Mm -hmm. Type 2 diabetes is completely lifestyle, mm -hmm. completely lifestyle disease. Um, and so you want to really, uh, you don't want to be like her. Okay, <laughs> sitting around eating bonbons. <laughs> you don't be like that, all right? Uh, if you want to shrink your brain, this is, this is my favorite study right here. Remain in chronic pain and avoid chiropractic care. <laughs> don't come to my office if you want to shrink your brain, okay? So this is a study out of the Journal of Neuroscience, November 2004, so it's been around for a long time. I bet nobody here has ever heard of this study, okay? This study showed that chronic low back pain causes the brain to shrink at a rate of about 1.3 cubic centimeters, which is about a half inch, per year, which is the equivalent of 10 to 20 years of normal brain aging. So chiropractic adjustments alleviate low back pain and stop brain shrinkage. So um, this is, Remember, chronic low back pain shrinks your brain, okay? Uh, chiropractic affects brain function in other positive ways. It affects, um, this is a study in Japan. They use a PET scan and they looked at what happens to the brain when somebody's adjusted, okay? They found out that it lights up the cingulate cortex, learning emotions and memory. It lights up the cerebellar vermis, which is right back here, which is posture, movement, and the, the, the processing of emotions. It uh, reduced the somatosensory cortex, which is pain perception, which means you feel less pain. And it reduced salivary amylase, which is an enzyme which increases with stress. And that was um, published in the journal uh, uh, of or evidence-based complementary and alternative medicine. Very, very interesting study. This is a study you'll never see on TV. Right. Nobody will ever publish this. No, no money no. in this. No. Uh, here's a bonus. 
subject to your brain. So if you want to shrink your brain, oh, subject, make sure it gets traumatized, okay? So like head some soccer balls or bang your head, you know, in a, you know, put your head through a windshield in a car accident. Anything that traumatizes your head um, uh, really uh, has a capacity to shrink your brain. So this was an interesting study. They looked at 14 retired soccer players who played an average of 26 years and um, six concussions. They looked at these soccer players who had dementia. They studied 30 years until their death. And um, they found that uh, these soccer players suffered from dementia, motor impairments, mood disorders, and uh, had all kinds of problems. So <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm a big sports fan. I like sports, you know. Soccer's a little boring for me. I mean, that's the most interesting part of the game right there, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, uh, you know, head injuries and concussions really hurt people badly later in life. And, uh, and, and the only thing that I know of that really helps concussion is fixing the neck, fixing the brain with laser, and, and the right kind of nutrition mm -hmm. after the concussion. There aren't any, you know, when you, you know, people that are concussed need their fish tank clean. They don't need to be medicated, okay? <laughs> Medication, there's no drugs for concussion. By the way, Pfizer, completely shut down or section the um, part of research they were doing on trying to find a drug for Alzheimer's because they spent a lot of money on it and they couldn't find anything that worked, anything. So, you know, the, the problem, and I do a whole talk on Alzheimer's. We'll do that probably, that talk next year or at the end of this, you know, sometime in the summer or fall. But uh, they're finding that Alzheimer's is lifestyle. And if you can keep your brain healthy just by doing some of the things I talked about, you know, you don't have to get Alzheimer's, okay? Uh, so this is the shrink your brain lifestyle right here, okay? Drinking, lots of McDonald's, uh, uh, Crisco, bad fats, uh, no sleep, back pain, and this is the... Uh, what you need to start doing. So if you want your brain to shrink, you need to stop doing this. Getting adjusted, eating healthy, exercise, drinking water, um, maintaining a normal weight, eating healthy and whole food. So let's talk about action steps. So there's a lot of information here tonight uh, that I had for you. So what I want you to do is just pick one thing that you'll learn here and start doing it. You know, you have to do all of this stuff, but just find one thing. Maybe you just need to drink more water. Maybe you're drinking enough water, but you need to exercise. Maybe you need to cut way back on the amount of sugar you're eating from processed food, okay? Just pick one thing. That's all I'm saying. You have to do the whole thing. And then um, share your success with others. Um, uh, and, uh, let, let them know. I mean, I gave you notes so you can share the notes with others, talk to everybody else about note, uh, other people that you know about how they can keep their brains healthy. And all of this stuff, every single thing I showed you is based on research, on a research study. And the reason I did this talk is because over the years I kept coming across research about shrinking your brain. And it was a different study, different study, so finally I decided to put it all together into one talk, and that's what this is. So uh, how many of you think you can do one thing, just one thing about what I talked about? Okay, okay, good. So what are you gonna do, Kelly? Do you know yet? <laughs> well, I think I've got the sugar tackled at this point, but oh, it, you God know. bless you. <laughs> <laughs> it took a 60-some hour fast to get through it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good for you. Yeah, now Excellent. I need to start drinking some more water. Okay, that's yeah. good. All right, great, great. What are you going to do, Jason? More water. Okay, good. Excellent. That's easy enough. Okay, so the choice is here. You can shrink it or save it. And that's that's all I've got tonight. Yes? Does oxygen have anything to do with the brain? What I'm saying is, how about people that lack oxygen? 
this. So let me ask you a question. Like in the hospital, if you're in the hospital or something. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, hospital different. Yeah. But how do you oxygenate your brain? Drink water. Okay. How do you do it? You drink water. Okay. We all breathe. Yeah. Okay. Even people in hospitals breathe. Yeah. How do you oxygenate your brain, Terry? Let's say exercise. Bingo. Walking. Exercise. That's yeah. the right answer. Stay you active. oxygenate your body by Get exercise. Off your duff. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. Good answer. That's that's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Anybody I have else? A question uh, with guys that are boxers, they get hit a lot in the head. They yeah. end up in a wheelchair mm -hmm. most of the time. Good luck. Good luck to them. That's all that I can say. Uh, yeah, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. you know Joe Frazier, just name a few. Yeah. You know, look what happened to them. Yeah, it's nasty. Oh, terrible. It's, it's it's nasty. That's right. They yeah, they traumatize their brains quite a bit. And a lot of them, you know, they love being hit and I don't understand it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, yeah, fun. boxing's pretty boxing's pretty rough on the brain, okay? It must be. So if they you know, if they they're in a boxing match and they go drink drink alcohol yeah, and they drink that's afterwards. Not a good thing. Okay. Yeah. They get blood clots. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? I have a question about that. Two thousand fifty Alzheimer's will be so pervasive it will consume what was the amount for the gross national Like our entire gross national product. It's, yeah, I've heard that somewhere. I, that's in my Alzheimer's stuff in my Alzheimer's talk. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't look at that slide before I said that. So I, you know, you come to my Alzheimer's talk, which we'll probably have in three or four months. Uh, you'll, you, we'll get we'll get have that study up there, but yeah, you could probably find that that study online too. That's mm -hmm. grow Alzheimer's is growing so rapidly that it's going to just consume our entire healthcare system at mm -hmm. some point. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Who's going to take care of it? If everybody has Alzheimer's, who's going to take care of you? Yeah, yeah. it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, that explains the medical system itself. It must be Alzheimer's already. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. So, uh, so some, a lot of you people, you know, a lot of you know people that are sick and unhealthy, and and so I, you know, we can help a lot of those people here. We can help them. We can help them with their back pain. We can help them with, you know, lifestyle choices and 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 lower their their uh, sugar levels in their blood. So, you know, you know, who do you know? that needs that because we can help those people and we want to help them. Like this is my this is my mission statement right here to bring health, hope, and healing mm -hmm. to Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And uh, so have them, have them make an appointment, we'll talk to them. If we can't help them, we'll get them to some place that can, you know? But uh, at least they can have a shot at getting better and getting whole again. And that's, you know, who doesn't want to be whole? So that's all I have for you. It's a little after 